Hey, what's up guys? This is a quick walkthrough video to get you started using the Ableton Live template. I'm really excited to show you how to get everything set up and running so you can start using sounds and start doing tracks using Ableton Live. Uh, this is a template that I use for playing at church on Sundays, for playing for different events, and for doing production work. I've tried to streamline everything and make it in a way that's easy to understand without a ton of setup involved. So I'm gonna start by showing you the layout of everything and then we'll get into MIDI mapping and all the different effects that I'm using for the sounds. So here's the session, and I'm only really using session view for this template. I don't have anything happening over in arrangement view. So if we just start over on the top left corner, I've got patches uh, split into different categories. So here's a bunch of piano sounds, I've got some synth sounds over here. I've got some more synth sounds. These are my pads over here. These are darker sounding pads and these are brighter sounding pads. And then over here is a section for using drone pads. Over here is my cue for using tracks. And if I open up these, there's a template for dropping in stems for all your different songs. And then over here, more percussion sounds. And then lastly, a section just to write notes if you have um, different changes you're making for songs and need to write that down. And over here on the right, I've got the master channel with a few of our Bethel Music songs. Okay, so before I show any of the setup involved, let me just walk you through the sounds really quick and then I can get into MIDI mapping and um, IAC drivers and all the stuff that's necessary to get the most out of this. Okay, so over here I can switch between different sounds by clicking on the different clips. So it's a compressed and an upright piano, cinematic, soft piano, chorus piano, and a dynamic piano. These first three are keyscape patches, the compressed, upright, and cinematic. Soft is the soft piano from Labs. Chorus is using this compressed piano and adding an extra chorus effect on it. And these last two are also keyscape patches. Okay, let me open up the device view and show you what's going on with the sounds. First, I have two velocity curves for the Nord Stage 3 and the Nord Stage 2. I've found that these curves work best when using either of those instruments um, versus not having any velocity curve at all for your pianos. Um, so depending on if you're using one of those, I would switch between that by just activating those velocity curves. And you can always adjust this if you need to, if you feel like this um, curve isn't matching your instrument correctly. Uh, but that's what I have it set on. I'm gonna close those out. Over here I have a pitch MIDI effect and I'll explain what I use this for in a second. Um, I'm using an IAC driver for this. Uh, I just wanna explain how everything else works first. Over here I've got a filter, verb, delay, and I can switch between Valhalla verb and the Ableton stock verb using this dial. Okay, and then over here I have the actual patches which match the ones up here. And there's sections to drop in your own instrument if you want to. So if I was to drop in an instrument for patch one, I could go over to my browser, go to, let's go to plugins and just drag a Keyscape patch in there. And I just drop it in right over there. And then I've got a patch for patch one. And if I want to activate this, I'm just going to right click and click activate clip. And now if I switch over to that one, I'm hearing sounds from patch one. Okay, so the verb dial is adjusting the dry wet of the verb. This is completely dry. And then 
all the way wet. Here's the filter. I don't use this very often for piano. And then this is a delay. If you need to change any of these effects, they are over here on the right in this piano effects section. I've got the verb and delay settings over here. Moving over to synths, this is going to be very similar to the piano. You've got filter, verb, and delay. You also have a sequencer setting. And if I have it turned to zero, that's off. This is on. First patch is a CP70. Square pluck. Purity synth. Pluck synth. Distorted synth. And chorus brass. All right, so the sequencer works on the purity synth and pluck synth. I just marked them by these lines right here. And if I turn that on, pick purity synth, I'm able to hear a sequencer effect. I talked earlier about using the IAC driver in this template. You're going to need it when you're using this synth split. How I've designed these patches to work is when you click one of these, it'll actually split your keyboard so that the lower section is controlled by these sounds and the top two octaves are controlled by these sounds. This gives me the ability to still play piano and then add an extra lead line high up while not affecting what I'm playing on the piano. So let me show you how to get that set up. You're going to want to open up Spotlight, click Command Space, and then type in Audio MIDI Setup. Once this is open, go up to Window, select Show MIDI Studio. And over here, you want to select the IAC driver, double click it, and if this is not selected, check this box so that the device is online. You can change the name of it, but I would just leave it IAC driver so it's easy to find. Once you've done that, exit out of there, go back to Ableton Live, click the top menu, click Preferences, and in your Preferences, go to Link MIDI for the IAC driver make sure that remote is turned on. And then in output, you wanna have track turned on for IAC driver. Okay, so let's exit out of there. And you should be good to go. What's gonna happen is when I select one of these sounds, it's gonna turn this pitch MIDI device on. So right now it's off. And then as soon as I click this, it's gonna turn this on. And this is restricting these sounds to the lower section of the keyboard. And it'll do the same thing for this over here. It'll turn that on as well. And when that's on, this top section of the keyboard, the top two octaves are controlled by these sounds. Let's see how that sounds. I'm gonna select a piano sound. And then I'm gonna select one of these synths. I'm going to do the Jupiter PWM. So that's the upper part of the keyboard. Down here is piano. Moving on to our pads. These are the darker sounding pads. This one is called Dark Blossom. CS80 Swell.
modulated pad. Mellotron. We've got an organ. And you can use the mod wheel for that one to get that Leslie effect. Juno pad. Fluff pillows. Moving on, these are your bright sounding pads. This is called string machine. Be pad. Champion sequencer. Willow pad. Bright pad. Step sequencer. All right, so in the effects of the bright pad section, you've got a filter, reverb, you also have sidechain and sequencer. Now, these two are already sequencers, but you can add a sidechain or sequencer effect to any of these sounds. So let's try it with the OB pad. I'm gonna start playing. I can adjust the amount I need just by turning this dial. Same thing with this, I can turn this and get more or less of the sequence effect. And that's using these LFO tools over here. Next section is called texture, and this is for droning pads to play while you're playing these other sounds. Uh, with this template though, it's not gonna actually come with any sounds but you have the ability to add those in there if you want. This next section is called Q, and this is gonna be all your count-ins and different cues for different sections for any tracks that you're using. So if I open that up, there's a drum rack, and I have a bunch of different MIDI cues. Break, hold, last time. These are all from multi-tracks. They have them for free. I have the link available for you guys so you can uh, download those. This next section is tracks and I don't have all the tracks in here. If you need tracks for these songs, you can download them from multi-tracks. I have one as an example to show how this template works. So this song is Closer by Amanda. Uh, I'm gonna click this and explain what's going on after I play a few seconds of it. Intro, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so first of all, these clips are actually triggering a little bit sooner than these ones. So let me start it. Intro, two, one, two, three, four. I set it up this way so it switches to the next section, maybe half a second before, so that when it goes to the next section, if it's changing patches, it's not changing immediately on the next section. Because what can happen sometimes with that is you go to hit the note and it hasn't actually switched over to the next section yet. So this gives you a half second buffer. So when it switches over, you're able to hit it and it's gonna be the right patch for the right section. Um, I have it set up with key where if I press M, it's gonna turn off tracks and Q. And if I press L, it's gonna turn off all of these. Let's say I'm playing this and I wanna turn off these, but I wanna have these still play. I'll just hit M and these will still keep playing. And then whenever I wanna have it stop doing this automated patch selection, I'm gonna click L 
and it'll stop that and then I can just select whatever patch I have and it'll keep the last patch that you played selected so it doesn't turn off everything all at once. So the way that it's automatically switching between sections without clicking them is by using follow cues and that is if I click this clip or any of these clips for that matter it's over here in this launch section I've got follow command and so it is telling these clips as soon as two bars have played go to the next section this allows you to um, let's say I wanted to do this chorus twice I can just copy and paste it and it's going to as soon as that course is done go immediately to another chorus without having to re-trigger it so if I knew beforehand with the arrangement that we were going to be doing two choruses I could just copy and paste it and then you're good to go if you need to change you would need to um, change the cues in here so that it's not cueing you to go to um, the next section it would cue you to repeat that chorus so you can just change that over to chorus so for MIDI mapping I'm using a nano control I'm using the sliders to control the um, sections so this would be for piano synth and pads over here and then i have these controlling filters and verb um, i can take a picture and include that in this so, so you can see how that works and then each of the buttons on this main pad are for switching between different sounds so i'll show you how that works let me plug this in um, so if I click MIDI, these ones are already pre-mapped. Let's just get rid of these. And I want to, um, I want to have this one triggered by this one. So I'm just going to hit this button and it's going to MIDI map that. So now I can just hit that button and it'll trigger that patch. So I've done that for a bunch of different ones. I don't have enough pads on this nano control to be able to map everything but I picked a few sounds that I like and mapped those so now if I open this up I can map the filter if I click MIDI click the filter and then just move this dial now I have that MIDI mapped and so I can control the filter using that dial again I'll put a picture up of all the settings that I have so you can see it go off of it and change it to customize it the way you want it to be a couple other things I have C the C button maps to turn the click on and off I also have an IAC driver on the click so that as soon as I start the tracks it is starting the click as well just so I don't have to think about it in case I start the tracks on accident and don't have the click going it's already uh, mapped and ready to go intro two one all right well hopefully i covered everything i know that was a lot of information um, if you have any questions about anything feel free to contact me using my website and uh, i hope this is helpful for you and i hope you have fun using these patches and running tracks using this template